Ian Foster with the standard center cam package unboxing. Center cam assembly, clip. If you had bought the deluxe package, then you would have a light ring here, soft case underneath, but you don't need those things to get started. All you need is the camera assembly and your clip. On the back, QR code leads you to our website, thecentercam.com, for tips, tricks, support, or accessories. Um, quick start manual, legal nonsense, USB-C adapter, center cam assembly. We added four inches of flex tube to go from 12 to 16. That allows for a handstand mount or a Cobra mount if you want to get Karate Kitty on everybody. Anyway, however, center cam comes top down orientation. That's the way it's programmed to be able to do bottom up orientation. Uh, on a PC, we have a uh, virtual webcam software that allows you to change the orientation. Um, on a Mac, you're going to be using eyeglasses or uh, OBS, which are aftermarket um, unaffiliated virtual webcam softwares that we've had a good experience with, and that allows you to change the orientation. So setting it up, five feet of USB cord, feed it through the handle. And once you get to the flex tube, you have your first decision point, which is where, how much flex tube to take advantage of. Totally dependent on your workstation. Um, good rule of thumb is upper third of your screen. So I'm gonna place that camera right about there. And then I'm going to click it into the U-hook at the top. Click, nice satisfying click. Okay, now we're left with our first decision point. And you can see it's getting a little bit squirrely in the back. I'm going to leave this in profile when it, once I plug it in. The reason it's squirrely is we have a beveled screen here. So it's not parallel. There's a little bit of slant to it in the back. This is an early 2010s iMac. Some of the newer iMacs have even more of a pronounced slant to the back of them. So how we deal with that is right now it's a positive tension clip. So it actually has, I can feel the tension on my finger. If I clip in the back one, it becomes a passive tension clip, which operates more like a standard webcam. So you just squeeze it into place and then it actually, I can feel a little bit of tension, but it's, we call it passive tension. So I put that into place, squeeze it. There you go. Okay. That's about where I want to start out. Now the caveat here would be if you know you're going into a video conference with multiple people, then you might actually want to start out um, with the camera in the middle of the screen. And I'll show you why here in a second. And I so the flex tube, if you don't clip it in quite right, you can see it's kind of shifting this way, like a, I don't know, like a car's alignment issue. So I'm just going to unclip both of those and make sure that I, I get to my angle that I want and then hook it in. I'm going to do that again on the back. Put it in. There we go. Okay. <laughs> we opted for a flex tube to allow the most amount of customizability across different workstations. Um, a, a set rod, you'd just kind of be stuck with it and you wouldn't be able to do the minute adjustments that you just saw me doing. Uh, we're going to start an instant meeting which is going to be a meeting with just me. So hopefully it goes okay. Okay, you notice I have a black screen. All my photographer friends out there can back me up. I've been defeated many times by lens caps and it sucks in the heat of the moment. So don't let that happen to you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna blow the screen up a little bit so you can see what we have going on. I've been fiddling with the focus of this lens. And so um, the lens itself is uh, manually focused in the factory lens. And I'm going to bring this up here a little bit so you can see. Um, the camera body, it actually, you see these ridges it has in the back. Those are 
passive heat sink. So it decreases the operating temp of our camera. But right here you have a lens. So think of it as a DSLR camera or sometimes even on your smartphones, it's fuzzy. You click on the place you wanna focus on and the camera calibrates and automatically fo focuses for you. So what's happening in here, we have an image sensor and then an actual uh, external lens. So it, it operates a little bit differently than um, the, you know, like the, the native webcam on my iMac here. Um, and it, it's factory, sorry, it's uh, manually focused at the factory, and, which is fine. Um, but there, I mean, there's a very small amount of human error and it does happen where, uh, you know, it's either not factory set properly or in shipping it adjusts a little bit. It's um, focused to two feet. <clears throat> and so you laptop users and people that are a little bit farther back, um, it can potentially get fuzzy. So I'm going to show you how to adjust that. So there's a lock ring here. You have to undo that lock ring. And so you can see the whole assembly is, is twisting, but they, they twist separately. So that's just like a nut on a bolt, this inner, you know, thinner piece of plastic that's called a lock ring. So we have to undo that. And then you see the lens actually moves freely. You don't want to go more than a turn. And I'll show you what I mean by that. The lens, we do have other lenses as accessories. And so you can take the lens out and put in another lens. Okay. But for focusing purposes, we don't want to take the lens out. It, it's very finely threaded and we don't recommend that people get um, accessory lenses if they're, if they're not used to DIY sorts of situations. And what I mean by that is... Um, you have to actually be able to feel the threads a little bit. Okay, so as I'm threading this, I can see myself getting a little bit fuzzier in the picture. So that means I'm going the wrong way. So I'm going to go the opposite way. And there we go. Which you focus. So I go back to here. And depending on my use scenario, if I mean, this is where I'm going to be. I'm going to be right here. This is a good focus for me. I'm a little bit high in the frame, so I'm probably going to pull that back a little bit. And I might actually do that with my MacBook as well. Now, that leads to the second thing that I needed to talk to you about, which is lighting. So every camera on the planet has to choose how it deals with light. That's why in photography, you rarely see people with the sun in the background. It's because the sensor on the camera can't really differentiate between the brightness of you know, a hundred million candles and the nuances of a person's face. And so it, it all of a sudden it makes the face black or whatever, you know, it blacks out the face. So, uh, every camera has to do that. So if you're in a situation in your office where it's kind of a cave and you have white fluorescent light, your, your webcam isn't going to present you as good as you possibly could be presented in my scenario. And you know, I see, you know, I'm kind of blown out over here. It's, it's making my camera have to make some choices because of my office setting. What I'm going to do instead of, you know, fighting the camera sensor, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the blinds. And that's going to allow the camera to present me a little closer to what my natural coloring is. Okay. Now, if this were my normal workstation, what I'd probably do is get uh, an external light. You know, we have these, you know, center cam lights. They're really simple solutions. They're kind of a travel solution. So if I wanted to be, you know, white light, more natural color, a little bit brighter, that helps overcome some of the issues that I have just based on where my office scenario is. Um, if you're back if you're opposite if you're backlit with natural light you know your webcam's going to struggle with that um they're really inexpensive options and generally speaking if you have warm bulbs in the room and you don't have you know a, a really bright side light or backlight situation you're probably going to be okay um okay so now that we are in our video conference we've dealt with focusing issues all of that stuff then we go to where do we actually put the video window? Now, 
tips and tricks. I rarely ever move the center cam once I'm actually in the meeting. So what I do do 99% of the time is I move the video conference window to frame it to whoever's talking. And what I typically do is I put the center cam right on right above a person's eyebrows. So right about there. Now you can do whatever you'd like to do. I found that's a good focal anger for me to be looking at and be able to actually capture, you know, the nuances of what somebody's saying. So as we're looking at this, say I wasn't just talking to myself, I'm talking to somebody, somebody else. It's just a, a two person video conference. We're not moving around a lot. I'd probably just be able to hang out here and just talk and have a normal conversation. I'd be able to look at the person I'm talking to. If we're in a multi conference, then I just do a little bit of adjustment, bring that thing down a little bit. And you're gonna have to do a little bit of imagineering with me because I'm still just me on this video call. Okay, but picture there's two or three or four or five video windows here. And so what I'm gonna be doing, I'm probably gonna minimize just a little bit. This isn't my normal workstation, this is my son's workstation. Best practice is usually to align the center cam with your your eye gaze so that means i'd probably push this up a little bit this is my son's workstation though so i'm not gonna fiddle with it um so if larry over here in the upper left we're imagining a, a multi-party zoom is talking i'd move the screen there and then if sally over here in the lower right starts talking i'd move the video conference window over there and i do most of the dynamic of connecting with the people that I want to connect with and listening to them, presenting myself in such a way that they feel like I'm listening to them while they're talking. That's how I do that. That's how I create that. I just move the video conference window around. Um, I think I've covered it. That was a long deliberate pause, but um, we found based on, you know, thousands of customers, those are some of the biggest hiccups that people experience immediately. Um, center cam does require a different paradigm. I mean, there's choices that you can make in customizing what the webcam does based on what your workflow is and what your needs are. And so the ability to present yourself better, to create that eye contact, to read the subtle nuances of the nonverbal communication that center cam allows you to do. Um, it does require you to, to, you know, make some chase choices and make a few changes in your video conference environment. And, um, and it's great. You can finally customize that to what your needs are. Um, and I think that meeting went okay with myself. I'll have a debrief later. 